Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Let's start with a word of prayer. <clears throat> our God and our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this day and for the many blessings that you bring us and for the opportunity we have to come together to study a lesson out of your word. Father, we just pray that you will be with those who are ill at this time and that you will watch over them and, and return their health to them if it be your will. Go with us throughout this hour that the things that are said may be brought to light, may honor you and glorify you in all the things that we do. We pray these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> okay, we have been studying the seasons of life start, well, for about the last... Okay, we can start now. For about the last three months, uh, we've been starting out with the seasons of life. We have covered the spring season, summer, and fall, and then now we have moved to winter. Uh, Zach started out with a couple of lessons to start with in winter, and now it's my turn to teach, and it's kind of hard to follow all these other people that's been teaching, so we'll get into the lesson and see what we can do with it. First of all, I want to start out with a couple of questions that I want to ask. And just to think about this throughout this lesson, but how do we stay faithful to God for a lifetime? And then one specific question, what has kept you faithful to God thus far in your season of life? And if anybody has any comments, just feel free to speak up because I, sometimes I don't always see hands. But does anybody have anything that what is, that's kept you faithful throughout your whole life? Well, a couple of things that I wrote down to start with would be a good foundation. And uh, early on in life, maybe choosing good friends, knowledge of God's Word, practicing the truth, and surrounding yourself with good Christian brothers and sisters. And then a continual study of God's Word. And I think probably for most, I think the main thing that keeps me focused is the destination that we all will have at the end of our life. And that will be heaven. So that's, that's a few things that I have that I wrote down. And then there's one other question that I want you all to think about. We'll cover this later on probably in another lesson. But if you were offered the opportunity to have one wish fulfilled at this moment in your life, what would your desire be? So if you could just have one wish fulfilled, what would your desire be? And you could have anything that you wished. So just think about that for while we're looking at these lessons. So as we look at the winter season, there's uh, several places in the Bible that talks about seasons. And I know this isn't going to be anything new for anybody, but maybe it's just a little bit of a different perspective on the subject from God's Word. So when God created the earth, He made seasons to bring about change upon the land. He had a season to bring forth a new beginning, to prepare for planting, the season for growth, then to harvest, and then for the land to renew itself and get ready for the next beginning. In Genesis 1 verse 2, it says the earth was formless and void. So as, as we look at the seasons, to start with, there was nothing. But then if we look at Psalms, I'll just read some of these, but in Psalms 104 verse 19, it says he made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knows it's time for setting. So we know that God made the seasons and he has complete control over them that we don't have control. And often men, I know he likes to think that he has a lot of control over things, but really we don't. We can't control the wind, we can't control the rain, the heat or the cold. Only God has everything in his control that he's made. So in Genesis 1 verse 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And also in Genesis 8, verse 22, it says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, 
summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So when we look at, at when God created the earth, he made these seasons for a reason. So we know that it's not just something that just happened, but we know that everything is there for a reason. And I look at that as the seasons of life itself that we, I think there's a lot of similarities that we go through if we look at the seasons of our life and then at the seasons that God created. And many years ago, whenever I did uh, some farming when I was out of college, we uh, did a lot of dry land farming. So then, it's, it's a lot different from what it is now. Uh, there's a lot larger implements and they farm a lot more ground. But back then, we would leave a third of our acres out for what we called summer followed land. And we would basically let the, the land renew itself through the winter time so that you would have a good crop whenever you planted the next time. Because they had to have time to recharge and renew the land just like to get nitrogen back and things like that. If, if you continue to farm year after year on the same ground and you don't fertilize well, well, you're not going to have good crops. And of course, it always depends on what rain you get when you're dry land farming. You just, whatever God sends, if he sends the rains, you'll get some good crops. And if not, your crops probably won't yield quite as much. And it's the same whenever we graze cattle. You can graze on pastures, and if you don't rotate, uh, you graze it down too low, then it takes a long time for the grass to come back out. So I look at these seasons and I look at the things that God set up and I think for man that there are seasons to life itself as we've been studying, the spring, summer, fall, and winter. So I want to read a verse in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. It says, For as the rain and the snow come down from the heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. So when I look at that, those verses, it's the same as what the seasons are. When God sends rain, or anything to the earth, it doesn't come back to him without doing what, he, what it's supposed to accomplish for him. And it's the same with his word. And I think as us as his people and his messengers, it's up to us to spread his word no matter where we're at in life. Even if you're in your winter season, I still think it's up to us to continue to spread his word that it will accomplish what he wants it to. So I know that probably everybody in here has a favorite season out of all the four. So does anybody want to share what their season is, what they like, as far as a favorite? Okay. Fall? It's Today? Today? It's good. Every day is a new day. Well, for me, I'm the same. I like fall. Uh, whenever I was farming, after you plant crops, you get to see the harvest in the fall. You can really realize what's gone on throughout the whole season as you've watched your crops grow and you see them produce at the end of the year. And then you can, when it gets to that time of year, you actually you can smell the change in the air. You get the first frost, and it's just a, to me, it's really a nice season to get that change from summer into the fall season. I know for us, we really enjoy going to the mountains, so in the fall we like to go view the colors in the, up in the mountains. And to me it's always been amazing just what kind of colors you get from God's creation, just from everything that he created. It's just amazing for me to go out and walk around in the forest just to see what he's done. And if you've ever had opportunity to, to go to the mountains and to see these things, I think you'd probably understand what I'm talking about. And I don't know about for you, but for me, I can't imagine living somewhere where there's not a season change. 
Uh, some people like it 80 degrees year round. Uh, some people like it a little colder, a little hotter, but for me, I like to see a, a definite change to a season. It's, uh, it's just, to me, it's just not natural to see it the same temperature all the time, never see the trees change, but I like to see things progress. And if we look at it, sometimes we look at change as not being a good thing, and there are some things that change that aren't always good. But if we look at and accept the change, just like moving from one season to the next, from one part of life to the next, I think that it's probably, if we have a positive attitude with it, we can accept it a little easier as we look at the change that we're going through every time we move to a new season. So does anybody have any comments or anything to add? Okay. So like I said, if we look at the seasons of life, just as God created them, I think we'll see the similarities between them. Springtime is a new beginning. The weather gets warmer. Flowers start to bloom. And in West Texas, of course, everybody that lives here knows that the wind blows. And then the planting season starts. Summer is a time when everything starts to grow and mature. Fall is a time for harvest, for storing up. The nights start getting a little cooler and the leaves start changing. And you can, like I said, you can feel it in the air. Then comes winter. I've heard some call it the dead season because they know what's coming. They hate the cold. The temperature drops below freezing. And they don't like to go outdoors and can't wait for spring to get back again so they can see the dirt start blowing. But for me... I enjoy the winter season to a certain degree. I still, I like the snow. I like the cold. Whenever I was working out in it all the time, I didn't always enjoy it when you had to go out and work in it, but I still like the season. And whenever you're, <clears throat> whenever you're out, to me in the forest, when you see the change from fall going to winter, and you see the first snow, and it's just so peaceful out there that you can walk through it, you don't hear a thing, you don't hear a word. It's just so peaceful to see what God has done. So for us, how do we use the time that God's given to each one of us? Because I know the theme for this year has been redeeming the time. So if we look at it, how does each one of us use our time? Do we use it wisely? I'd like to say I did all the time, but I don't. So we know that God has appointed a time for every event in each one of our lives. So it's, it's up to each one of us on how we use that time that God has so generously given to us. <clears throat> I know probably the majority of us in here still remember what phones are. I know a lot of the younger people may not relate to it as much, but uh, whenever I was younger, growing up, we still had the phones. Actually, we had, didn't get our first phone until I was probably about eight years old. And whenever we had a phone in the country, we was on a party line. So we had to actually share our phone with three other people. And nowadays, they probably call that a group chat. But back then, it was a party line, and you had to share it. So I know whenever we would get a call or whenever one of us on the phone, mom always had this hourglass, a little hourglass like this sitting there. She said, it runs for three minutes. She said, you've got three minutes to talk. So of course, you know, you start, and for a kid, three minutes isn't very long. And so I would start talking, but as soon as she would leave the room and go out in a few minutes, I'd turn it over. <laughs> and I could do that several times, and she usually knew what I was doing, but she figured it out. And sometimes she wouldn't say anything, but sometimes she'd come in there and she'd just, you know, give me the look, and I'd say, okay, it's time to get off. But, like I said, I thought I was pretty sneaky, but it really wasn't working. So what I want you to do is imagine that this hourglass is your life. So as you watch the sand run through it, that's a minute, a day, an hour of your life going out. Well, you can't just take and turn it over again and get some extra time. You can't start over, and you can't turn the clock back. So what we need to do me especially, is you need to make good use of your time because, 
Like I say, when a day passes, it's gone. Whatever you've done that day, it's just a memory. It's not gonna, you're not going to be able to do it all over again. And I know whenever, whenever they ask me to do this, these lessons, uh, Sam and AJ asked me about teaching. And they told me what I was going to be teaching. And so I looked at them and I said, so is it because I'm old? And they said, no, no, it's just it's not the reason that we ask you to teach. But really we know because I, f I fit the age group, so that's the reason they wanted me to teach. So it's kind of like the old saying, if the shoe fits, wear it. So for those of us that are in the season of life, in the winter season, we can look at the winter season that God's blessed us with, and I think we can look at it not as a desolate, cold, harsh season, but with joy, because God has allowed us to live a life, hopefully, that has brought honor and praise to Him. And we do have a choice as how we approach this time and what we do during this time. Even for those of you who are younger, Maybe this class will help you prepare for the next season of your life also. So winter is really different from other seasons. You, uh, as a person, you no longer have the strength that you used to have maybe in your summer season or fall. Some of the body parts don't work as well as they used to. And you're just not really in the prime of your life anymore. So when you get old, you'll find out that Many of the things that you did when you were younger come back to haunt you. Some of the things lifting too much or just some of the stunts that you pulled when you were younger, you'll find out when you get older, those things will catch up with you. And you'll be a little bit slower getting around. Your joints may ache and hurt a little more, but this is what we call the golden years. And sometimes the golden years may get a little rusty in places. But I believe the winter season is a time to, for us to plant seeds for the next generation. And it's also a time for preparation as we have been doing our, our whole life for the next chapter of our earthly life, for the final chapter. And then we need to look at a new beginning with God for eternity. And of course we know that you spend your whole life preparing. It's not, you don't just wake up one day and say, oh, I'm going to start now. You spend your whole life getting ready. And I know for some people, this is something, as you get older, it's hard to accept. The, <clears throat> the winter season is a little bit hard for people to look at because you know your time is getting shorter. And there are so, also some other ages that bother people. Sometimes you turn 40, you may turn 50 or 60, and some people just have a really hard time with certain ages when they hit that milestone. But in preparing for eternity, I want, to, I want to read in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Jesus said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so... I would have told you, for I, go to prepare a place, for I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So it's a time for us to reflect back on your life, but it's also a time to continue to serve God and to serve those around you and to look forward to what's coming next. It's not a time for people that are older to hang it up and say, well, I'm done. You know, I'm retired now. I don't have to do all that stuff anymore. But for us as Christians, we know that we need to continue our walk with God as long as we're here on this earth and, and as long as we're able to continue to do it. It's a time for teaching and mentoring and passing on knowledge and wisdom to the next generation. God doesn't forget us in our winter season, but is always with us, and we should, should never forget Him. In Hebrews 13 and verse 5, it says, Make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For He Himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. And in Matthew 28, verse 20, Jesus told His disciples, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. 
So I think these verses show us that God is always with us. He's never going to leave us. He's always there, but sometimes we walk away from Him. So God, in every season He's there, every event that we have in our lives, He's there. So whenever we, as we're doing these lessons, uh, we're going to be spending some time looking, I'm going to spend some time looking at the journey on how we get there. And then, as Zach's been doing, looking at some different people in their winter season of life also. And eventually we'll be looking a lot in the book of Proverbs for this study. So I want to uh, turn to Psalms chapter 90. Psalms 90, and uh, I want to read verse 10. It says, As for the days of our life, they contain 70 years, or if due to strength, 80 years. Yet their pride is but labor and sorrow, for soon it's gone, and we fly away. So when I look at this verse, this is a standard that I'm going to use to divide up the seasons. And I, I think you all have probably been through all this before as far as the different age groups and all, but since I wasn't in here earlier, I'll go ahead and do it again. But it's not really a, it's not a scientific, it's just my perspective on the subject as far as ages. But in the United States, the average lifespan of a male is about 76.1 years. For a female, it's about 81 years. So we're going to use 80 years old as an average lifespan of a person. And this is more of a statistical point of view or from a, the world's point of view. So if we look at it, 0 to 20 would be like a spring, a new beginning, a time to plant. The age from 20 to 40 would be summer, a time for growth. 40 to 60 would be a fall season, a time for harvest. And 60 to 80 would be winter, which is time for reflection and preparation, and also for passing the baton. Now, if we look at it from a Christian perspective, I think it's a little bit different. If you look at the age group from 15 to about 31, and don't get, don't get caught up on the numbers. This is just something that I looked at. But just say from 15 to 31, that's the years of your spring. Seeds been planted, and most people, by then, a lot of people, young people have been baptized, so your journey's starting. Although we know the journey for young people have started back from day one, whenever they were born. Their parents are always nurturing them and training them in the way that they should be going. And if we look at the age of 30, 32 to 47, that's the age of summer. It's a time for continued growth, and for learning, you acquire more knowledge, more understanding. Then from 48 to 63, that's the years of fall. Maybe you've already you've raised your children. You've continued to train and teach others about God. You're seeing the fruit of your labor as your children start raising their children. And you're watching the baton being passed on from one generation to the next. Then we come to the winter season. 64 to 80 plus because there's a lot of people that live past 80. So what is the winter season of a person's life? Does anybody have any thoughts, anything they want to add to any of this yet? Okay. I think it all depends on our attitude and our perspective. For the circular, for the worldly standpoint, the age from 64 to 80 and beyond those years are the years to just really live it up and reap the benefit of retirement. I know I've seen several of these signs, and I imagine you probably have too, but have you ever seen the sign that on the back of an RV it says, I'm spending my kid's inheritance? It's, a, it's kind of a funny way to look at it, but you know some people are caught up in that. They, all they can think about is making money, and then they want to enjoy it. So you've worked 40 plus years, you've worked hard and now it's time to kick back and enjoy the fruits of your labor. You say, well, I can travel the world, I can do anything and everything I want to do. It's all about the money you've made and it's all about you, all about yourself. 
Uh, some look at it and they say, I'll go out, I can buy that new boat I wanted, I can get a new RV, half million dollar RV, I go buy a house on the lake, I see all the sites travel the world. So you see what I'm talking about. If you look at it that way, is that really what life's all about? Is it about just enjoying yourself and truly forgetting God? According to the worldly viewpoint, that is what life's about. It's about what you can make, and they put, take everybody else out of the picture. It's, it's my money, it's my time, and I'm going to do what I want. And I'm not saying that it's wrong to have these things, but because we do a lot of traveling, and we go to a lot of places, but the main point for a Christian's life is that what we should focus on entirely is just having a good time, enjoying ourselves. Isn't it kind of a matter of balance on what we're doing? It's fine to enjoy things, but do we, as a Christian, do we just enjoy all the good things that we've received and leave God entirely out of our life? Because wasn't it God that allowed you or I to have these things? You know, I remember we're only stewards of what God's blessed us with. And we have to be responsible when we do these things. If you remember back in John 14, verses 2 and 3, it said, In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. So as Christians in the winter season of life, I think it's okay to relax and enjoy all these things, but it's also a time to be ready to pass the baton to the next generation. And we need to continue to, to prepare for the next season in eternity. In the winter season of life, you probably have more time on your hands. So what, what do you use that time for? Anybody have any ideas? Okay. Always teaching. So you really have a lot. If you're retired, you have more time to actually serve others. Have more time to help. Just to do a lot of things that you, in your other seasons, you were busy when you're in the summer season, you're busy raising kids, you're busy working, you're trying to do this and that. So sometimes you don't always have that extra time to do things, but once you're retired, I know a lot of people say, I don't know how I had time to work after I retired, I just don't have any time. But you have the time that you'd make time to do things. So I think as an older person, you can take the time to really focus more on God and more on, on the other generations and on the other seasons of other people's lives. They may need help doing certain things that you may be able to help with. So for me, the, the older you get, the more the priorities change and the more my perspective changes on life. The things that used to seem important uh, 20, 30 years ago, they're just not really that important anymore. You know, working... Uh, trying to get ahead at work, doing things like that. Those things, it's just, you can, I can see now that it's not really that important. But you need to work. So for me, if it's God's will, and He's gracious to me, when I look at this, uh, I'm 65, so I might have another 15 years or so left, according to what the standards are. And then like I said before to another class, I said, well, that's kind of a, a standard you go by, but I could walk out the door and get hit by a truck crossing the street. So you don't ever know. You know, God only is the only one that knows our time left on earth. So we really need to make good use of our time and focus on helping others, I think. Anybody have any comments, any thoughts? Yes.
Actually, that. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Carlton. Oh, I thought you had something. Sorry. So, you know, like when you're in your early years, uh, most young people think that they're invincible. They can conquer the world. There's nothing that they can't do. I was there. I remember those years, too. But then when you get to the, this age, you kind of do a reality check, and it sets in, and you realize that uh, those things you used to do, you can't do everything anymore. And then you start thinking about it. You say, well, you know, I've lived three-quarters of my life, so I don't, I've got a, maybe a quarter of my life left. So then you start thinking about things that you maybe you should have done or things you need to be doing and things that you should be helping others do. So in, a, in Matthew uh, chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So if we look at this verse, what is that we should be showing others? Should we be showing others that we should be, should we be letting our light shine? Or should we be showing others that how hard we worked and that how much we're going to enjoy the rest of our life and we're not really going to bother too much serving God anymore? You know, you get, sometimes you can get an attitude, you think, well, it's okay to, to miss Sunday here and there. I'm going to go to the lake. I'm going to go do this. But is that really what we need to be looking at? So you think, well, he'll understand. You know, it's not a big deal. It's my time anyway, and I, I deserve what I've got. But we know as Christians that we don't look at it that way. Even in our later stages of life, we always need to continue to let our faith stand out and our light shine to all others that we uh, meet every day because you never know even if you're out traveling on the road you don't know who you're going to meet out there you don't know what impact you're going to have on somebody else's life but the point is even though I'm in the last stage or season of my life on earth it's not time to quit or it's not time to give up but to, we need to continue the race in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4 and verse 7 Paul told Timothy he says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Okay. So, if you remember the hourglass that I showed you at the beginning, you know, as we look at it, you know when time runs out that that's it. Your life's over. You can't buy more of it. You can't turn the glass over. And you can't get just a little bit more time out of it. You can't roll back the clock. And you can't start over again. So each of us should be making good use of our time for the glory of God no matter what season we're in. Does anybody have any, any other comments? Robbie? Right. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not a time to stop. I know some people get to where they can't do much. You know, it depends on, on their health. Sometimes they can't do a lot. But I know I've known a lot of people that didn't let their health bother them at all. You could watch them work. You could watch them uh, work at church. And you couldn't tell there was anything wrong unless somebody told you. And it's just, it's a difference on, I think, on attitudes on how you look at it and your perspective. We can choose to be, <clears throat> to be a good worker for the Lord, or we can choose to go over and sit down and just say, you know, I just don't really feel like doing that today. You know, I'll, I'll let somebody else do it, somebody younger. But there's a lot of older people that, <clears throat> that continue to work hard. So 
So the question that I asked earlier, <coughs> excuse me, says, how do you remain faithful to God throughout all four seasons of life? I know it's going to be a little bit different for every person, for every season, and there's, there's always different challenges. But this is one of the questions that I want us to kind of look at throughout this study. So does anybody have anything they want to add right now? Chris? Exactly. We should always let our light shine just like you said <clears throat> as a city on a hill because people are watching us every day. They, they see what we do and even if we think nobody's watching, we're still going to have an impact on somebody out there. <clears throat> I saw an example once as we're closing, but there was a... If you ever watch whenever you drop a rock in a pond, what does it, what does it do? Does it just go in and then that's it? You watch the little ripples start small and they just keep getting bigger and bigger as they go out. So if you look at your life as a, not as a rock, but if you look at your life as, a, as the ripples that go out, you're having an impact on somebody out there somewhere. So it's not just, it's not just one drop. You know, as your life <clears throat> continues, it continues to go out. And so people are watching how you live your life. They're watching what you do. And the young people especially, they see everything that you do in your life. And we can be a good example to others. So that's all I have for this class. So thanks for all your attention.